time. Time is what clocks measure, as Einstein once said. But the reality of the situation is more complicated than that. Clocks can tell us the time, sure, but clocks can't tell us what time is. Last time, we discussed time as an objective characteristic of the universe, whether time is absolute or relative, how time is structured, and whether the past and the future exist. If you haven't watched that video, there'll be a link in the description, because it's about time you did. However, aside from being an objective characteristic of the universe, as science claims, time is also important in our subjective conscious experience. As we shall soon discover, the situation becomes even stranger when we zoom into the universe and examine what time is like inside our own minds, perhaps leading to the conclusion that time doesn't really exist. If we're interested in the subjective characteristics of time, we should start our discussion with our subjective conscious experience, and there's nowhere better to start than with psychedelics. It's a well-documented phenomenon, as the psychonauts in the audience will know, that time appears to become a little skew-if under the influence of certain drugs, such as LSD and psilocybin. Time slows down or even stops, as minutes feel like hours and hours feel like eternities. Sometimes, one can have the impression that one has stepped outside the flow of time and is observing it from the outside, transcendent above the mere mortals stuck within the temporal stream. How do certain groovy chemicals interact with our brains and disrupt our subjective conscious experience of time? And more important, could psychedelics reveal that time doesn't really exist? Well, it depends on who we ask, but Kant seems to think so. For Kant, the supposed objective characteristics of the universe like space and time are not really characteristics of the universe, but rather categories of the mind that allow us to organize the universe into its spatial and temporal dimensions. In other words, time is dependent on consciousness. Without consciousness to structure the universe with its categories, there would be no such thing as time in the universe at all. Time is just a method our minds use to orient us, but that doesn't make it a characteristic of the universe. Or perhaps Kant picked too many of the wrong kind of mushrooms. Or the right kind. Okay, that's all the references to drugs I'm allowed to make before this video gets demonetized, and I need that ad revenue for more drugs. Anyway, let's move our discussion away from these kinds of trips and towards actual trips in time. Time travel. Time travel has been a cornerstone of science fiction stories since at least the 1890s, but the serious scientific theorizing started after 1949, when Gödel published his solution to general relativity, which allowed for travel within time. Classical questions about time travel revolve around whether time travel is allowed within the laws of nature. Since this is a scientific question, we'll not answer it here. However, the question of whether time travel is allowed in logic is one that we can begin to answer, and we'll start our search with a paradox. Most of us will have heard of the grandfather paradox, which involves going backwards in time and killing one's own grandfather. This leads to a Kugelblitz, I mean, paradox, because one would never have been alive to go back in time and kill him in the first place. So, it seems like time travel defies the rules of logic, but there are other ways that time travel can be ruled out on philosophical grounds. For example, time travel could also be impossible if presentism is true. Presentism, as we discussed in the last video, holds that the present is all that exists, and that there's no such thing as the past or the future. If presentism is true, then our time traveller will be in a bit of a pickle when they attempt to travel back into the past if that past doesn't exist. In a similar fashion, it could also be that time travel is impossible because backwards causation is impossible. If there's no backwards causation, then there's no way to start a time machine in 2022 and have it miraculously arrive out of nowhere in 1922 or 2122. However, there are a small class of scientists and philosophers who do believe that time travel is possible. We usually have a decent intuition about whether some rule of the universe has been broken in some way. We can certainly tell which time travel stories are logically impossible, such as the grandfather paradox. 
But there are also logically possible time travel stories, where the time traveller finds themselves in a different leg of the trouser of time, or they simply cause what had always happened to happen. While our intuitions are not the best foundation for scientific knowledge, the fact that time travel strikes us as intuitively possible does indicate that it might be. However, of all the weird and wonderful discussions we've had about time, we now come to perhaps the most important. What if time doesn't really exist? Not that time is mind-dependent or that time travel isn't allowed, but that time doesn't really exist at all. This seems like a ridiculous, even impossible claim. How could it be that there's no such thing as time? Surely the progress of this video is measured in seconds and minutes, just as a lifetime is measured in months and years. However, this view is taken seriously by a philosopher called John McTaggart, who argues that time doesn't really exist. McTaggart argues that time appears in our perception in two distinct ways, the A series and the B series. The A series involves a continuous series of past, present and future, and provides us with a changing now. The B series involves times that appear earlier or later than one another, and provides us with the temporal order. Together, the A series and the B series provide us with time as we understand and experience it. With me so far? Good, because it's about to get complicated. McTaggart argues that only the A series is necessary for time, because it's the only series capable of change. Change is the essence of time, except for US laws which still seem to be stuck in the 1800s. And without the A series, the B series doesn't involve change. However, McTaggart also argues that the A series is contradictory, because no one time can be in the future and the past at the same time. For example, if I have an existential crisis in the future, at some time, this will have become the past. But that doesn't make sense on the A series, because the existential crisis has the properties of both the future and the past. We could argue that these events are not simultaneous, but rather happen in succession. But McTaggart argues this doesn't work either. In order to explain that succession, we need to invoke new times, and on and on until it becomes an infinite regress and a vicious cycle. Therefore, because the only series that's necessary to time is contradictory, time doesn't really exist. Right, so the discussion about time is even more complicated than we could have imagined in the last video. Not only do we have no idea about whether time is absolute or relative, how time is structured, or whether the past and future exist, but rather we have no idea how the subjective experience of time works on psychedelics, or whether time travel is possible, or whether time really exists at all. All I can really say is that it's time for a rest, to be honest. Thank you very much for watching, peace and love, and I'll see you in the next video.